Wednesday night. This is the night that 510 is supposed to run at Maryland Live. I don't know how consistently it's been running, but we're gonna head over there. Hope it runs. I think it will. I know a few other people who are gonna come into the game. Let's head over. Boring that like why would anybody think you make it up? One guy, there's like people are fucking this guy off. <laughs> you know you're playing with the famous vlogger, right? Oh, he is vlogging. Oh, this is going in the vlog. He's got the camera out. I didn't realize. I thought you were just did playing. You get the, did you angle it from when you showed the Ace of Clubs? Or no. <laughs> no. If you are new to this channel, my name's Matt. Welcome to the vlog. Uh, we got a few fun things going on here, but before we dive into that, just want to say to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel if you're new here, and uh, why not write me a comment and tell me how your day was? I'd love to hear about it. That's, uh, that's my microphone. Also, if you're interested in playing online poker for real money, hit us up in Discord. Link down in the description below. Also, while you're at it, just go to Discord anyway. It doesn't really matter if you want to play online poker. But down there in the description, Discord info, we are starting to uh, gain some momentum here. Got a handful of members, some active, some some just lurking. It's okay to lurk, but uh, we love the active guys especially, so go on over there if you want to talk poker strategy, hands, really anything that you feel like talking about. Uh, some people have said some sort of rude things in there, but uh, I'll get over it. In all seriousness, it's been a blast over there so far, so get on over to Discord, hang out, and uh, we'll talk more there. So diving into this poker session, uh, I spoke earlier on the vlog about trying to play a little bit bigger, at least consistently 2-5, and I did finally have the chance to play some 5-10 at Maryland Live recently, so I wanted to go over some of those hands, uh, talk about what it was like stepping up, because, uh, you know, I don't play 5-10 that often, I've probably played uh under 10 sessions of it in my life something like that um between five and ten and i'm guessing that most of the people who watch this channel probably play one two one three maybe some two five and for the most part are not playing five ten because it's just a smaller player pool in general uh now that all being said uh, i was obviously pretty excited i was kind of trying to go in with low expectations and I didn't really know what the game would be like. So I kind of came in just prepared for anything, but hoping to mostly have a good time and try to play my best. Uh, so came in, bought in for 2K in the beginning. Actually, Zach Hoke was in the game. Uh, so it was fun to kind of have somebody there who I uh, know and like. <laughs> um, and uh, a couple other regulars who I knew as well. Uh, Noah Sheffrin showed up. Uh, Evan, Evan was in the game too. I, I, I'm blanking on his last name, but anyway, uh, a couple other players who I did not know, who I'm guessing only play bigger, um, and, and probably just don't even bother with 2-5, or they do, and I just haven't crossed paths with them. So, diving on into these hands, uh, like I said, bought in for 2k from the start, and uh, right away I actually got involved in a pretty interesting spot. So, we're only six-handed, which is not shocking for a game like this. It's not going to be able to draw as many people. Um, and I look down at ace-king in middle position. I bump it up to 40, and Zach is in the cutoff and makes the call. The button, three bets to 160. So, uh, when it folds around to me, you know, with ace-king offsuit facing a three bet, it's like, yeah, you're probably going to four bet, but you're not that happy about it. In a 5-10 game, you just sort of assume people are 3-betting a bit wider as a default. Uh, I think most of the mistakes that people make uh, in lower stakes games are more passive mistakes, and some of the mistakes people make in the higher stakes games tend to be more aggressive mistakes as a default. So, very clear 4-bet. I make it 440, and the button calls. Uh, this is another thing you're going to see is a lot less give up uh, from the people who are 3-betting. So when the flop comes out, jack, seven deuce with two diamonds. Um, even if we didn't hold the ace of diamonds here, I think this would be a pretty clear c-bet spot. Um, sizing wise, we definitely don't have to go as big as we did pre-flop. I end up sizing it down to 325 and he just makes the fold. Um, 
what feels like a pretty inconsequential hand in uh, a game that I'd be really used to was actually a pretty nice one to just pick up and win uh, playing a little bit bigger than normal. So nice, nice to get that one through and uh, move on to the next hand. So in this next hand, we've got 2.2k in the stack, king, jack, offsuit, and I'm in the cutoff. So I open it up to 40 here. The button, who is Evan, makes it 125. And when it comes back around to me, I sort of want to set the tone here because he's on my immediate left. I think that if we just fold the first time he three bets us, it's going to kind of send the message that we're going to do a fair bit of folding. And I don't really want that to be the message I'm sending. So with a hand like King Jack offsuit specifically, uh, if it were suited, I'd probably call. But offsuit, I sort of prefer a four bet here as well. Uh, we do block a lot of the good hands, ace-king, pocket-kings, pocket-jacks, even a hand like ace-jack, uh, although he may three-bet fold ace-jack, so maybe we don't want to block that. But ultimately, uh, we have a hand that blocks a lot of the good hands, doesn't play that well out of position, so this time I go for the uh, four-bet once again. Uh, I make it 310, and he makes the call. Not sure what's going on in my notes here because I don't even... I don't even... Uh, have the board taken down must have been really low or i just forgot uh but i know i put out a c bet made a c bet in the neighborhood of two or 250 and uh, he just folded saying something about my pre-flop four bet being <laughs> so small so uh yeah we're learning here we're learning here out in the 510 streets so next hand 2.5k in the stack king jack of hearts in the hand this time i'm in early position i bump it up to 40. The small blind makes it 160. So you can see there's a sort of consistent theme uh, going on here that people, uh, there's a lot more three betting. And this is, by the way, in like the first hour, maybe hour and a half. So it's not like I'm playing this session for nine hours and getting these few hands. Uh, so this time with a suited hand and being in position, I decide that we can make the call. So that's what I do. I'm going to go heads up to a flop of king five deuce. He C bets 100, which uh, sizing wise is nothing crazy. Uh, obviously with top pair here, nothing uh, nothing much to do but just put in the call. So that's what I do. The turn is the seven of diamonds, which is the second diamond on board. And he now bets 275. Uh, I think that this player is still, you know, we should expect him to be capable of barreling plenty of hands here. Uh, ace queen and like some suited ace x come to mind. Uh, any two cards that are diamonds. Uh, I definitely don't think we can fold just yet. So I put in the call, and the river is a pretty bad card. It is the ace of spades. He now bets 375. And uh, honestly, this is a spot where I get myself really turned around because I, I think like his sizing is really indicative of a lot of ace x. He probably realizes that I have a lot of king x in my range. He's going to struggle to get paid by those hands. So he sizes down relative to the size of the pot compared to his previous bet. But at the same time, this is 510, not 25 or lower. And I talk myself into these sorts of decisions where uh, I think someone's sort of capable of doing something that maybe they're not incapable of, but they're not doing it as frequently as I would think just because it's 510 or just because it's, you know, 25 instead of 13 or whatever. So I end up sort of crying, calling it off on the river. Uh, and indeed, I am behind to ace queen. So uh, kind of annoying one there. Uh, definitely pretty happy with my play up until the river. I, I think that maybe a hand like king queen we can call because it blocks ace queen or something like that. But it's hard to find a lot of calls here. So my call really might not be terrible. It's just sort of hard to know where the line should be without doing a ton of off table work curious what you guys think about this hand so leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought what you would have done and uh whether you think i'm just a, an idiot for making the call in this hand cut down to 1.7k early position makes it 30 and i have ace king of clubs in middle position and bump it up to 105. he makes the call so we go heads up to a flop which is king 10 10 one club he checks very clear c bet here but we're going to be down betting this is a reasonably disconnected board there's no flush draw uh there are some straight draws so we don't want to bet tiny i guess but i decided to make it 75 and he makes the call turn is the eight of hearts he checks and now i start sizing up a bit 210 
The river is the deuce of diamonds. He checks once again, and I think that we definitely want to be betting here. Our hand is certainly good enough. He can have king queen. He can have king jack. This particular player has been playing enough hands that we shouldn't really expect him to have, uh, you know, only better or like fold king queen here. So I think we definitely want to go for a third street. It's even possible he would raise a ten on an earlier one. So I go ahead and bet five fifty, and he tank calls with king queen. Uh, so nice to uh, pick one right back up after being down and actually bounce back a little bit into profit to 2.6k now in the stack. Early position opens it up to 30, middle position calls, and I'm in the hijack with ace-queen. I think this is a spot where uh, we could call, but it's not really a hand that's going to play that well multi-way being off suit, and ultimately is probably going to benefit enough from isolation that 3-betting is pretty much in order here. So I bump it up to 150, but do not achieve isolation, both of them call. Could have something to do with the fact that I've already 4-bet twice and 3-bet twice in like the first two hours, but moving on. The flop comes out 7-5 deuce with two spades, two checks to me, and I decide to c-bet 110. With the queen of spades in my hand, uh, I think this is fine. I could probably find some give ups if I didn't have a spade, but this board is reasonably disconnected and they're not going to have a ton of hands that smash it. So early position calls and we go heads up to a turn, which is the king of clubs. Now I'd probably be one and done in this board a lot, but on this exact card when he checks, I think it's a pretty good card to barrel and we should probably be setting up a triple barrel um, most of the time. That's a little bit scary to think about, but uh, we do decide to do that. Uh, set up a river barrel by making a 375 on the turn. However, he foils our plans immediately by check raising to 1300. Now, this is the problem with barreling a hand like this is that we really don't have a whole lot of equity. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not terrible because I'd rather bet fold this hand than bet fold a hand that I would prefer to see a river card with, but still kind of frustrating. Have to let it go. And he shows a kind of gross card in the ace of clubs so it's a little bit difficult to know if he had something like ace king sort of assume he would four bet that hand but who knows uh and he could have had something like just ace three of clubs with backdoor clubs backdoor straight draw maybe even something like ace seven ace five of clubs or a pair in a backdoor flush draw uh it could be really any number of things but obviously I feel a little bit foolish when he shows that exact card because pretty hard for him to actually have something there oh show bluff um show the ace of clubs oh there it is oh bang 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 do we have the straddle on no straddle in this next hand down once again a little bit below uh what i bought in for 1.9k in the sack look down at pocket kings under the gun and have a clear raise to 40. There are somehow four calls, and we go multi-way to 10-8 deuce. Now, with the king of spades in my hand, I'm going to check this some percentage of the time. Not always. Could definitely still see about it. But uh, at this point, I want to get some money in, but not a ton of money in. I go back and forth on multi-way spots like this, but in this instance, I decided to check. Ends up checking around, and the turn is the four of spades. Now the board is getting pretty coordinated, but we do have the king of spades as backup, which is good. Checks to me though, and I decide to bet 125. Folds to the small blind who makes it 275, which is kind of scary. Um, we could already be drawing dead to the nut flush. We could be drawing very thin to a better flush than what he has. And it certainly seems like if this player was going to bluff in any sort of capacity, he would probably do so on the... Uh, like on the turn just stab himself when it looks like most likely people are just gonna uh you know check through again on the turn potentially uh so i make the call but i'm not really that happy about it and i'm not really sure what i want to be doing here the river is a ten of diamonds so uh it's kind of a brick in the sense that i don't think he's gonna value check raise a 10 on the uh on the turn rather so i don't really think it does a whole lot at the board and he now shoves 385 which is another reason why i kind of had alarm bells off on the turn like he puts in a pretty sizable portion of his stack most people check raising here will not have 
uh, you know, just like nothing. So I really struggle in this spot because again, higher stakes game than I'm used to. And ultimately the, the pot is just pretty big compared to his shove. So I make what I think is a bit of a crying call and I do indeed lose to a flush. So uh, not too happy about that one. Have to add on a thousand and I'm now in this game for $3,000, which honestly is just never that fun. Kind of doesn't matter if it's a 510 game. I, I don't love being in the game for 3K, but moving on from that hand, we've got to uh, keep our head on straight, move forward and try to play well. Already think I've made a couple pretty sizable errors in this session, but got to shake that off. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes. Got to just move on. So in this next spot, we've got about 2K in the stack and we're seven handed now. I am in middle position with seven, six of clubs and I open it up to 40 bucks. The button and the small blind both call and the flop comes queen five, three with two clubs. So we have a flush draw, although it's a weak one and a gutter to the nuts. Small blind checks, I check and the button makes it 75. The small blind calls and I decide to check raise. I was thinking sort of in the moment that check raising might be kind of nice because I would do that with some of my very strongest hands. Um, the problem with it though, is I probably never do that with like ace queen or king queen. I probably just C bet those. So it's definitely a little bit of a high variance play represents a strong hand, but he may not go away if he actually has something here. I bump it up to 325. the button calls and the small blind folds. The turn is a three of spades, which I consider to be a pretty good card because it blocks pocket threes. Um, it, it doesn't really improve any holdings in his range in the sense that he shouldn't really have just a three here ever. So I decide to put him to the ultimate test. I think he's going to have just a queen pretty often, and he's going to have a very hard time calling off if that's all he has. Uh, plus if he ever had something kind of silly, like queen five suited, uh, he's going to be sort of counterfeit now to my over pairs. So I go ahead and shove my 1195 and he tanks. So his tanking is definitely good for us. We didn't want to get snapped. Um, the other sort of benefit of jamming here is he may be forced to fold better flush draws, which, uh, I mean, he might not fold, I guess, but it seems like he probably will. He tanks for a while, but ultimately calls. <laughs> we agree to run it twice. And the first river is the eight of hearts. So we just, totally brick out and the river is the four of clubs giving us a straight flush and he turns over pocket fives <laughs> so uh this is a player i have a fair bit of history with and he said in the moment that he was kind of worried i had pocket queens with the way i played it which is fair because it's sort of what i was trying to represent still was pretty shocked to see him think about it with fives and it's kind of crazy that i was uh, on that turn specifically, drawing just to the straight flush, and then I got it on the second run out. Uh, so really lucky there. I don't think I've ever run so lucky in a game that felt a little bit bigger. Uh, nice, nice to nice to put that one on the books. So moving on into this next hand, about two k in the stack once again because again we chopped the last one, one run out each. Seven hander once again, and early position limps in. Middle position makes it 50 and I flat the button with pocket fives. Limper makes the call as well and we go to a flop of queen 10 five. The original opener C bets 50. I raise to 180. I think we could go a couple different ways here when it's rainbow. We could definitely just call but again in this slightly more aggro dynamic with some of the image that I'm starting to garner here I think it makes sense to play this hand fast. He makes the call and we go heads up to a turn, which is the 10 of clubs. He checks. I now bet 360, expecting that I can hopefully shove a basically brick river. But he doesn't want to wait around for me to do that. He just jams it in himself. I don't really have to ask for the count here. I just put in the call and it turns out he has uh, less than me, around 1.5k. The river is a brick and I don't know what he has. We ran it once. Uh, I just get to take that one down pretty, pretty important pot there. And we chip quite a bit up, end up winning and losing some other hands. I think we have about 3.5 K in the stack now, and we are five handed. There's a straddle and I'm in the cutoff with black pocket threes. And I open it up to 75, the button and the small blind both call and the flop comes out seven, six, three. So another bottom set for us. 
uh, just running really good at this point. I C bet 115 and the button makes it 255. This is the player who we played the uh, seven six of clubs against pocket fives hand. So at this point, I think that he may expect me to get kind of far out of line. So I decide to just jam my 1.1K. Well, it's technically his 1.1K. He tanks for quite a while, but eventually calls. And we decide to run it twice. The first board is a king and an eight, while the second board is a five and a queen. And I end up winning both against seven six of diamonds. So pretty, uh, pretty lucky here. Just an extreme cooler flop. I think especially in like a 510 lineup, you can't really expect him to ever go away uh, with top two on this board. He's basically not drawing dead against anything. Uh, I can have, you know, open ended with two overs on this board. It's definitely unlucky for him uh, and very lucky for us. I mean, I got extremely lucky in the session a couple times. Don't feel I ran. Uh, I, I played particularly well. I think I exploited people in a couple of spots well, but ultimately made a couple blunders, calling it off a little too light. And, uh, you know, just kind of had to keep my head on my shoulders and find those coolers. So pretty, uh, pretty fortunate to book a win here in for 3000 out for 46.95, and, uh, gained a lot of good experience. You know, like I said, it's sort of been a while since I played any 510 consistently and I've never really played more than a few sessions at a time. So, uh, feels good to start getting back in the mix there, start challenging myself and start trying to progress as a player because, you know, ultimately in this game, I found myself in a lot more tricky spots than I would in a typical two five lineup and certainly a lot more than I would at 1-3. So uh, yeah, uh, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought. Join Discord, link is in the description for that as well. And if you wanna play online poker, info at Discord. So come hang out with us, come chat with us, come play poker with us, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.